Hello friends, welcome to CEC Live Lectures. Dear friends, today in this session we are going to talk on one of the important and interesting topics. We are going to talk on optical fibers and for the discussion on the topic we have with us in our studios Dr. Sonia Bansal. Dr. Sonia Bansal is assistant professor and she is a teaching in YMCA University. She is a prolific professor. She believes that whatever she has gained through her academic career should be disseminated to the students. So for the benefit of the student community as a whole, she makes continuous and persistent efforts and uh, with the help of live lectures of uh, CEC, she gives you valuable content. So take, let us take advantages from her experiences and let us try to understand what optical fibers are. Friends, if you have any question regarding the lecture or while listening to the lecture you feel so that there is a certain query, then you can contact us through our toll free number. You can ask questions live. And uh, for contacting us, you can note our number. Our number is 1-800-110-430. I repeat, our number is 1-800-110-430. You are requested to call in the last 10 minutes of the lecture. Now, I would like to welcome our guest, Dr. Sonia Bansil, once again. Hello, ma'am. Welcome you. to the lecture. Thank you, Gideka. Okay, today we will discuss about the optical fiber. Optical fiber it plays an important role to transmit the signal from one place to another place. Today we are using the internet facility and this optical fiber is one of, one of the most important technique to transfer the signal from one place to the another place. Today so we will discuss about the fiber optics, its properties, its application and moreover what are the important features of the fiber optics we will discuss in today's lecture. First we will start with the definition of optical fiber. What are the optical fiber? Optical fiber is an optical transmission device which works on the principle of total internal reflection. Means optical uh, fiber are used to transmit the signal and they worked on the principle of total internal reflection. What is the principle of optical fiber? When a light signal is directed at one end to the fiber at a suitable angle, it undergoes repeatedly total internal reflection along the length of the fiber. It means we are sending the light signal in the optical fiber and in the optical fiber it is moving by the repeated total internal reflection and finally it comes out at the under another end. This is the principle of the optical fiber. Now, what are the important feature of the optical fiber? What are the what are the requirement of the optical fiber? The core first is the core. Core is defined is the internal part of the optical fiber. These are the basic fundamental part of the optical fiber. First, we define the core. This core is approximately of the size 8 micrometer and it is made of the glass or the plastic with a high index of refraction than the cladding and it carries a signal means we send the light signal from this core and it pass through this uh, this signal pass through this optical fiber through the core. The second most important is the cladding. Cladding is also made of the glass or the plastic which is having the low index as compared to the core and uh, low index, uh, lower index of refraction and th uh, the core is having the more refraction index as compared to the cladding and the size of the cladding is 125 micrometer. Next part is the buffer. The size of the buffer is 250 micrometer and this is used to protect the fiber from the damage and moisture. Next is the jacket which is the cover of the optical fiber which holds one or more fibers in a cable and its size is 400 micrometer. It means optical fiber is made of core which, which is having the higher ref, ref, uh, index of refraction cladding which is having a low index of, refraction, index of refraction and the buffer which is the cover of the optical fiber and the jacket which holds all the fibers. Next is what is the basic structure of an optical fiber? Then optical fiber is a flexible transparent fiber made by the glass means silica or the plastic to 
a diameter slightly thicker than that of the human hair. Its size is approximately more than that of the human hair. Then optical fiber is a dielectric wave guide and ideally has a cylindrical shape. As we uh, see here that the core shape is cylindrical and more uh, and similarly here the cladding and the coating of buffer is also having the cylindrical shape. It means the fiber optics having the cylindrical shape. It consists of a core made up of dielectric material. This core is made up of a dielectric material which is surrounded by a cladding made up of a dielectrical dielectric material of lower index than the core. It means dielectric uh, refractive index of core is more as compared to the cladding and this is a buffer which is the cover of the core and cladding. Now, what is the principle of light transmission in a fiber? How the light transmitted in a fiber optics? Basically, the fiber optics deals with the transmission of light energy through the transparent fiber as we are using the glass and plastic and should be transparent so that the light can be transmitted through this optical fiber. And the how an optical fiber guides light depends on the nature of the light and the structure of the optical fiber. The total internal reflection will take place will depend upon the structure of the optical fiber because there is a requirement of the optical fiber to get the total internal reflection so that light can pass through the optical fiber and the light signal can be sent from one place to the another place. It means a light wave is a form of energy that is moved by the wave motion. It means opti in fiber optics wave motion is the movement of light energy through an optical fiber as we are using the light. So, we are having the movement of light energy through an optical fiber. Next, what are the properties of light which is using, which is which we are using to pass through the optical fiber? Then we all know that when the light waves strike an object, some of the waves are absorbed by the objects, some are reflected by it, and some might be passed through it. On the basis of that, then the light strike on the object it is reflected when it is uh, when we are having the reflected second is transmitted and absorbed when it is absorbed then it is uh, it, it, it is known as a absorbed when it passes through it it is transmitted when it is back then it is called the reflected wave what are the uh, and then what happens to the light depends on the material it means when we are using the what what is the properties of light when we are using the different material to pass through the light it means uh, transparent clear material it transmit the light means when the light fall upon a material which is the transparent or which is clear then light will transmit through it next is translucent see through means material may wear the scatters the transmitted light take place opaque not see through means the material is absorbed and reflected back through this material it means the uh, the property of light also depend upon the material which we are using it may be transparent it may be translucent it may be opaque if we take the transparent then light will transmit if we take the translucent it will scatter if we will take the opaque then it will be absorbed properties of light we define the transparent and clear material these are those material that transmit almost all the light waves falling upon them are said to be the transparent material all the light will transmit through this material or we can see clearly other objects through the material such as the glass clear plastic that allow nearly all the light that strike them to pass through. Now, translucent uh, we see through material we can say see through material it means the material through which some light rays can pass but the objects cannot seen clearly because the ray are diffused and this type of material are called as the translucent material as we shown in the figure here we see that th things are not clear through this uh, transparent material uh, the, the, these materials are known as the translucent materials although object behind these materials are visible but they are not 
clear as in case of the transparent. Transparent we are having the clear object but in the translucent the things are not clear behind that material. A frosted glass or a piece of oiled paper are the example of the translucent material. Next is the opaque, opaque we all know that, that we cannot see through it, that material is known as the opaque material. Those material that are unable to transmit light wave falling upon them are set to the opaque material and we cannot see other object through the opaque material and examples are the wall of the rooms and there are many examples of it. Now, we just discuss about the what is the reflection, we are talking about the some of the properties of light before starting the uh, working function of the fiber optics. What is a reflection? Reflection waves are those wave uh, reflection, reflection takes place through the light in which we are having the reflected waves are those waves that are neither transmitted nor absorbed but are reflected from the surface of the medium. Here we see that this is the incident wave and it passed through the mirror and here we see that light will be reflected, reflect, reflected. means the light, uh, light is not absorbed, not, tra not transmitted but it is reflected from the surface of the medium. Here we are taking the surface as a mirror. When the wave approaches a reflecting surface such as the mirror, this is a reflecting surface, the wave that strike the surface is called the incident wave. This wave is known as the incident wave and the wave that bounces back is called the reflected wave. We see that the amount of incident angle angle that is reflected from the surface depends upon the nature of the surface means which material we are using number two the angle at which the wave strike the surface it means the angle of reflection depend upon the angle of incidence as well as the nature of the surface and angle at which the light will strike at the surface and we know that the angle of incident is equal to angle of reflection. Now what is a refraction? Refraction means when the light wave pass through the one medium to the another medium having different velocity of propagation. It means a change in the direction of the wave will take place. Here we see that the light is coming from the one medium that is the air and it is passed through the another medium which is the glass. Now you see the direction is changed here. Again the light is passed from the glass then emerge out in the another region that is the air. Again the angle changed. It means when the light wave pass through the one medium to the another medium having the different velocity of propagation, a change in the direction of the wave will occur. This change of the direction as a wave enters the second medium is called the refraction. This is known as the refraction. It is moving from the one medium that is air into the another medium which is the glass. Now the light is refracted through the glass. Refraction, a bending of the light waves due to change in the speed. Here we see that this is an example, this is a cup where we have a spoon. The the shape of the spoon is changed means here the the here we see the wave is looking like in a different posture it means the refraction bending of the light waves due to the change in the speed lens curved glass or transparent material that refracts the light that is a refraction now next is the diffusion when the light wave is reflected from a piece of white paper, the reflected beam is scattered or diffused. It means in the surface of paper it not smooth, the reflected light is broken up into many light beams that are reflected in all directions. Here we see that the smooth shiny surface have a clear reflection. This is a clear reflection but rough and dull surface have a diffuse reflection. It means diffuse reflection is when the light is scattered in the different direction that form is known as the diffusion.
नेक्स्ट इज एब्जॉर्बन एब्जॉर्बन मीन्स वेन द लाइट इज एब्जॉर्ब बाय द मटीरियल ए लाइट वेव इज रिफ्लेक्टेड एंड डिफ्यूज फ्रॉम ए पीस ऑफ वाइट पेपर बट वेन ए लाइट वेव फॉल्स अपॉन ए पीस ऑफ ब्लैक पेपर द ब्लैक पेपर एब्जॉर्ब ऑलमोस्ट all the light and very small amount of light is reflected from the paper if the surface upon which the light beam falls is perfectly black then there is no reflection it means the light is totally absorbed and this is known as the absorption here see in the figure the light is falling upon a black paper and it is totally absorbed by the paper if it is completely black next is we discuss about the sum of the ray theory um, uh, formula so that we can explain the fiber optics in more detail now what is a ray optics the light ray is homogeneous medium or the straight line if light pass from the homogeneous medium that it moves in a straight line there are the law of reflection what is the law of reflection where we define that the the reflection from a mirror or at a boundary between the two media of different refractive index here we are considering the different refractive index earlier we defined the two medium one is the air second is the glass glass and air having the different refractive index then the angle of reflection equals to the angle of incidence it means theta r is equal to theta i this is the law of reflection uh, the next is the snell's law of refraction at the boundary between the two media of the different refractive index and the angle of refraction is related to the angle of incidence that is the theta i then we define it as ni theta i is equal to nt sin theta t the, now we see clearly from this uh, diagram that what is the snell's law when a ray is incident on a inter interface between the two dielectrics of the different refractive indices we are taking here the glass which is having a high index n1 and second is the low index that is the n2 Ref reflection and refraction occurs here we see that the plane of incidence is equal to plane that comprises the incident ray and the plane normal here we see the light uh, uh, pass from this boundary then refraction takes place as well as the reflection take place now angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection now the angle of incident theta 1 and the angle of refraction theta 2 are related to each other and to the refractive indices of the dielectrics by the snell's law of refraction it means n1 sin theta 1 is equal to n2 sin theta 2 for the one refractive index for the another refractive index means for the one medium for the another medium now what is the refractive index refractive index the index index of refraction of a material is the ratio of the speed of the light in the vacuum to the speed of light in the material and it is defined by n is equal to c by v where n is the index of refraction and that is also known as the refractive index of the medium for the air and the gases we have value of n is equal to 1 means the uh, uh, refractive index for the air or the gas is taken as a 1 at optic frequencies the refractive index of water is 1.33 the glass has many composition each with slightly different n means uh, the the refractive index of the glass depends upon the material or the composition of the making of the glass depends and approximate refractive index of the glass is taken as a 1.5 and uh, which is representative for the silica glasses and used for use in the fiber the more precise values of the uh, of, of the these glasses between the 1.45 to 1.48 
Now here we are having the some refractive index for the some material as we know that the air having the refractive index 1, for the water it is 1.33, magnesium fluoride having the 1.38, fused silica refractive index is 1.46. Sapphire having the refractive index 1.8, lithium uh, niobate having the 2.25, gallium arsenide having 3.35, silicon having the 3.48, indium gallium arsenide phosphide having the 3.51, aluminum gallium arsenide having 3.6. Here we see that the composition will change the refractive index of a material and the germanium having the refractive index 4 which is the maximum as compared to the other composition. The index varies with the number of parameters such as wavelength and the temperature. Now the most important part in the in the optical fiber is the critical angle. Why we, why we require the critical angle? Because this angle is required to define the total internal reflection. Without a critical angle, we cannot consider the total internal reflection. Now, first we define what is the critical angle that is represented by the theta c. This is the angle at which the total internal reflection occurs is known as the critical angle of incidence. At any angle of incidence that is theta 1 greater than the critical angle light is totally reflected back to the glass medium. For N1 greater than N2, it means refractive index of the cone must be greater than refractive index of the cladding, the angle of refraction theta 2 is always greater than the angle of incident, means angle of refraction must be greater than the angle of incident when refractive index of material 1 means core is more than that of the cladding. When the light angle a refraction theta 2 is 90 degree, here we see the refracted ray emerges parallel to the interference between the media. It means the critical angle is defined by the Snell's law. The critical angle is given by sin theta c is equal to n2 by n1 or we can define theta c is equal to sin inverse n2 by n1. Here we see in the diagram that we are having a two refractive index n1 and n2. This is a high as compared to the uh, air and then we are seeing that light is falling upon it and here reflection will takes place but in case of refraction it is moving at the 90 degree. Now, to, what is a total internal reflection? You have to find the critical angle which define the total internal reflection. It means the angle of incidence means theta 1 must be greater than that of the theta c. The light is totally reflected back into the incidence higher refractive index medium. This is known as the total internal reflection. What are the condition for the total internal reflection that N1 must be greater than N2 and the second condition is theta 1 must be greater than the theta C so that we can get the total internal reflection. Either see in the diagram, this is the uh, refractive index of the glass, high, in, high index N1 glass, low index N2 air light is falling it means theta 1 must be greater than theta c then the total internal reflection will take place. The value of n1 is considered as 1.44 and value of n2 is 1 it is more as compared to the cladding means core refractive index is more as compared to the cladding then theta c will be sin inverse 1 by 1.44 and its value is 44 degree which represent that the total internal reflection theta 1 is greater than the theta c. It means the light will pass through the fiber at an angle greater than that of the 44 degree so that we can get the total internal reflection. What is the acceptance angle? Acceptance angle means that angle, uh, that angle through which uh, the light pass into the fiber. It means we define at the, it is that angle in uh, of the optical fiber 
where we are having the light ray pass with the maximum angle means the acceptance angle of an optical fiber is defined as the maximum angle of the ray against the fiber axis hitting the fiber core which allows the incident light to guide it by the core it means the light fall upon in the core having the maximum at the maximum angle and that angle is known as the acceptance angle. The sign of that acceptance angle is called the maxi numerical aperture and it is essentially determined by the refractive index contrast between the core and cladding of the fiber means assuming that the incident beams come from the air or the vacuum. Again we define here that this is, is the this part is the core part the inner part is defined the core which is having the refractive index n naught here we define by the n naught refractive index n1 refractive index of cladding then here we see that the light this is the uh, this uh, this is a fiber axis and light is light light ray outside the acceptance angle leak out of the core and this is a light ray in the angle are guided in the light fall upon this theta is defined at the acceptance angle. We define that acceptance angle of an optical fiber is defined the maximum angle of the ray hitting hitting the fiber core this is the maximum angle which is represented by the theta which allows the incident ray to pass the fiber optics and it will guide it inside the optical fiber and if we take the sign of that acceptance angle then we define the numerical aperture this will define the numerical aperture and it is essentially determined by the refractive index in contrast of the core and cladding of the fiber uh, and it also depends upon the incident beam which is coming from the air or the vacuum here we define the numerical aperture which is defined by the sign of uh, the uh, sign of acceptance angle this is the numerical aperture is a measure of the ability of an optical fiber to capture the light and the numerical aperture is also used to define the acceptance cone of an optical fiber uh, then we define mathematically an a numerical aperture is equal to root of n1 square minus n2 square means numerical aperture depend upon the refractive index of the core and the cladding where n1 is the refractive index of the core and n2 the refractive index of the cladding uh, by using the Snell's law here we see that this is the of uh, fiber optic axis the light fr from the air at an angle theta incident on a core of the fiber optics which is having the refractive index n1 and cladding having the refractive index n2 and here the refractive index of air is defined then according to the Snell's law we can define n air sin theta air is equal to n1 theta c what is the theta c theta c is the critical angle here we see that this is the numerical aperture through which the light enter into the optical fiber thank you with this note thank you ma'am thank you so very much for giving us this session on optical fibers friends there is lot more for you so you are requested to be with us as we are back after a short break thank you
Hello friends, welcome back to this session. Friends, as you know that today we are talking on optical fibers and we are trying to understand what optical fibers are. Friends, uh, we know that you have curiosity and you want to learn more about optical fibers. So, this is the second session on optical fibers where we are going to discuss more. For the discussion on the topic, we have with us in our studios Dr. Sonia Bansal. Dr. Sonia Bansal is assistant professor and she is teaching in YMCA University and uh, we would uh, tell you all that uh, she always makes uh, constant efforts for uh, you so that it becomes easier for you to understand different topics in detail. Friends, if you wish to ask questions from Dr. Sonia Bansal on today's topic, then do call us through our toll free number. Our number is 1-800-110-430. I repeat, our number is 1-800-110-430. Now, I would like to welcome our guest, Dr. Bansal once again. Hello, ma'am. Welcome to the lecture. We are talking about the optical fiber. Up to now, we have discussed about the what are the optical fiber and what are the principle behind it. Means we are taking the total internal reflection. After that, we discuss about the some of the definition which are required to define the optical fiber. Means we define the transmission, we define the reflection, we define the refraction absorption, and then we define the basic principle behind the total internal reflection, which is the to which is the total internal reflection in the optical fiber and we define the critical angle. The critical angle plays a very important role to get the total internal reflection so that light can be transmitted into the optical fiber. Up to now we discuss about those points. Now we will discuss about the sum of the types of the optical fiber. Then optical fiber is based upon the geometrical optical description then we have the optical fiber based upon the mode or the mode types. What are the mode? Mode is the one which describe the nature of propagation of electromagnetic waves in a wave guide which define the propagation of the wave and it allows the direction whose associated angle satisfy the condition for the total internal reflection and the constructive interference which are the two basic phenomena to get the uh, light pass through the optical fiber. Based upon the number of modes that propagates through the optical fiber, they are classified into two parts. One is the single mode fibers and light can propagate only the fundamental mode. Second is the multi mode fiber, light can propagate hundreds of modes. These two type of fibers are defined on the basis, basis of the mode. What is the mode? Which define the nature of propagation of the electronic, electromagnetic wave in the wave guide. Now, one by one we will define it. First is the single mode fibers. What are the single mode fibers in this type of fiber if only one mode is transmitted through it? In this type we have the single here we see in the diagram that only the one mode is transmitted through the core then it is said to be a single mode fiber. A typical single mode fiber may have the core radius of 3 micrometer and a numerical aperture of 0 0.1 at the wavelength of 0 0.8 micrometer. This is known as a single mode fiber. Then the characteristics of the single mode, mode fiber is that it is only one path is available for this. The core diameter is very small, no dispersion takes place in the single mode fiber. It is having a higher bandwidth approximately 1000 megahertz used for the long haul communication and the fabrication is difficult and costly in case of the single mode fibers. Then what about the multi mode fibers? Here we see in the diagram that the multi multiple vibrations of the waves takes place in the multi mode fibers. If more than one mode is transmitted through optical fiber, then it is said to be a multi mode fiber. The larger code radius of the multi mode fibers make it easier to launch optical power into the fiber and facilitate the uh, end to 
एंड कनेक्शन ऑफ द सिमिलर पावर्स मोर ओवर वॉट आर द करेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ द मल्टी मोड फाइबर दीज फाइबर्स आर हैविंग मोर देन वन पाथ को डायमीटर इज हायर हैविंग द हायर डिस्पर्जन हैविंग ए लोअर बैंडविड विच इज ऑर्डर ऑफ द फिफ्टी मेगा हर्ट्स यूज फॉर ए शॉर्ट डिस्टेंस कम्युनिकेशन फेब्रिकेशन इज लेस डिफिकल्ट एंड नॉस्ट कॉस्टली देन दट ऑप्टिकल फाइबर इज ऑल्सो डिवाइडेड इन टू द टू पार्ट्स विच इज बेस्ड अपॉन द रिफ्रेक्टिव इंडेक्स प्रोफाइल बेस्ड ऑन द रिफ्रेक्टिव इंडेक्स प्रोफाइल द कोर एंड द क्लडिंग द ऑप्टिकल फाइबर आर क्लासिफाइड इन टू द टू टाइप्स फर्स्ट इज द स्टेप इंडेक्स फाइबर एंड सेकेंड इज द ग्रेड इंडेक्स फाइबर वन बाय वन वी विल डिफाइन इन इट फर्स्ट इज द स्टेप इंडेक्स फाइबर वट आर द स्टेप इंडेक्स फाइबर वेर द रिफ्रेक्टिव इंडेक्स चेंजेस इन ए स्टेप fashion from the center to the fiber the core to the outside shell of the cladding it means refractive index change from the core to the cladding in case of the step index fiber it is high in the core and lower in the cladding the refractive index is higher in case of the core and lower in case of the cladding when we are talking about the step index fiber the light in the fiber propagates by bouncing back and forth from core cladding interface the step index fibers propagate both single and multi mode signal with in the fiber core it means uh, in the in the fiber in the fire uh, step index fiber the both the single and the multi mode signals can pass through it the light rays propagate through it are in the form of meridional rays and will cross the fiber core axis during every reflection at the core cladding boundary and propagates in the zigzag manner as we see in the diagram here we see that in the step index this is a single mode and this is a multi mode here it is moving in the zigzag manner see here this is a core and this is a cladding the refractive index from the core to the cladding is changing and the light uh, this is a, a index single mode and the light is propagating in a single manner and here we are having the multiple modes multiple lights will pass through it and the refractive index of the core is changing uh, when when we move towards the cladding these are the step index single mode and multi mode fibers next is the graded index fiber in the graded index fiber the refractive index of the core varies gradually as a function of radial distance from the fiber center it means the refractive index of the core decreases as we move away from the center the refractive index of the core is made to vary in the form of parabolic manner such that the maximum refractive index is present at the center of the core when we are talking about the graded index fiber the refractive index is maximum at the center of the core as we move towards the boundaries of the core the refractive index will decreases and the parabolic shape will be formed here we see in the diagram that here the refractive index of the Uh, core is n1 that this side we are having the maximum refractive index as we move towards the boundaries of the core the refractive index is lowering and this is the cladding n2 is not changing at the same and here we see that the light is propagating through the Uh, through the um, optical fiber in a multi mode mode and this is the periodically form of the light passing through the uh, graded index fiber and here we see that the input light pass through the there, there we define the different indexes this is the uh, this is the basic diagram define the core and here we are having the different different refractive index of the material and the multiple reflection of the light will takes place and then with the light can pass multiple light can pass through the graded index fiber now here we define the three types here the mono mode step index 
this is the multi mode step index in the mono mode step index fiber we are having the light pass from the core in such a manner the size of core is uh, is very less which is of the 8 to 12 micrometer uh, um, but the size of cladding is 125 micrometer and this is a uh, dimensions which is defined for the mono mode step index fiber and here we see that the single mode light pass through the fiber this is a refractive index for the core this is a refractive index of the cladding now we come on the multi mode step index fiber the multiple lights can pass through the fiber the size of the core is more as compared to the mono mode step index fiber and the size is 50 to 200 micrometer and for the cladding now the size is reduced here the size of cladding is 125 to 400 micrometer now we come on the multi mode graded index previously the step index now the graded index uh, we define the graded index here we see that the at the center the refractive index the maximum as we move towards the boundary the refractive index is lowering down then we can take approximately 50 to 100 micrometer the size of the core and for the cladding it will be the 125 to 1 40 micrometer in the case of the cladding the multiple uh, lights can pass through the multi mode graded index fiber now we are talking about the electromagnetic waves what are these electromagnetic waves which is passed through the uh, fiber optics these electromagnetic radiations propagate in the form of two mutually coupled vector waves it may be passed through the optical fiber and then it will propagate in the two mutually uh, coupled vector waves one is the electric field wave and second is the magnetic field wave both wave functions of the position and time in a source free linear homogeneous isotropic and non dispersive medium such as a free space these electric and magnetic fields satisfy the following partial differential equation that is come from the Maxwell equation. We all know that that del cross h is equal to E d e by d t epsilon d e by d t del cross e is equal to minus mu del h by del t del dot e is equal to 0 and del dot h is equal to 0 these are the equation Maxwell equations the when the Maxwell equation e is the electric field expressed in volt per meter and h which is the magnetic field expressed in ampere per meter then we can define epsilon which is the electric permittivity and mu which is the magnetic permeability then del is the divergence operator and del cross is the curl operation the solution of Maxwell equation in free space through the wave equation can be easily obtained for the monochromatic monochromatic means having the single wavelength monochromatic electromagnetic wave all the electric and magnetic fields are harmonic functions of light of the same frequency electric and magnetic fields are perpendicular to each other and both perpendicular to the direction of propagation k and known as the transverse wave and we know that e h and k means electric field magnetic field and direction of propagations all are orthogonal vectors now this is a diagram for the electromagnetic waves in the free space how it is propagating this is the z axis this is the x axis this is the y axis and this side we define the electric field this side define the propagation constant and this side define the magnetic field these are the electric these are the magnetic and this is the propagation constant k and electric electromagnetic wave is traveling wave which has a time varying electric and magnetic fields which are perpendicular to each other here we see electric and magnetic both are perpendicular to each other and the direction of propagation z there are the some specifications which are used for the fiber optics in which we define the some important features of the fiber optics first is the attenuation second is the dispersion third is the bandwidth and fourth is the numerical aperture all are equally important first we take with the attenuation attenuation means where the loss of the signal and it is measured in the db 
dispersion blurring of a signal means affects the bandwidth when the light pass from the optical fiber then these can be the specification can be takes place and bandwidth the number of the bits per second that can be sent through the data link and next is a numerical aperture which measures the largest angle of the light that can be accepted into the core that at which angle light can pass into the core and can propagate into the optical fiber and can transmit the signal from one place to the another place first we define the acceptance angle what is acceptance angle as we already discussed that what is acceptance angle that it is that angle uh, the light pass into the fiber optical fiber will only propagate the light that enters the fiber within a certain cone and which this cone is known as a acceptance cone of the fiber the half angle of this cone is called the acceptance angle this is the here we see in the diagram that this is the air mu not light is pass at an angle angle of incidence i then it will it is refracted then it is moving at the boundary of the core and this angle is the theta then from the core it pass through the cladding and here we are taking the total internal refraction from the snell's law we define mu not sin i is equal to mu 1 sin phi which define the angle of refraction angle of incident and angle of refraction theta uh, phi i i is angle of incidence and phi is the angle of refraction and the this behavior is defined angle of incidence and the angle of refraction is defined by the snell's law we define refractive index in the air multiply with the sine of incident angle to is equal to mu 1 the refractive index of the core inside the fiber optics and phi is the refractive uh, angle of refraction then we define phi is equal to 90 here this is the phi this phi can be defined by the 90 degree minus theta from here we can define it as a 90 90 minus theta then we can write it as mu sin i we put this value of phi into the previous equation the snell's law we have mu not sin i is equal to mu 1 sin 90 minus theta we can write mu not sin i is equal to mu 1 this will become the cos theta now mu not sin i is equal to mu 1 we can write it as root of 1 minus sin square theta now from here this equation we see that if i increases angle of incidence increases phi increases angle of refraction increases but the theta decreases theta is that is that angle is that angle through which the light will strike on the boundary of the core this is the maximum value of i beyond which the light ray entering the fiber will fall on the core cladding interface it means this theta is the angle of the light which is falling on the core cladding interface and uh, and such a ray will be refracted into the cladding and will not propagate this maximum value of i says i maximum is called the acceptance angle of the fiber what does me it mean that uh, when the ray refractive into the cladding and will not propagate it means the light will take place and follow the total internal reflection it is only possible at theta c when the angle of is, is less than that of the theta c now we define mu not sin i maximum this angle theta is changed by the theta c so that the total internal reflection can takes place we can write mu not sin i maximum is equal to mu 1 root of 1 minus sin square theta c when theta is equal to theta c then according to the snell's law we can write it as mu 1 by mu 2 is equal to sin 90 degree divided by sin theta c sin theta c can be written as mu 2 by 
mu 1 sin 90 is equal to 1 that is why sin theta c is equal to mu 2 mi by mu 1. We can write it as mu 1 sin i maximum from the previous equation is equal to mu naught yeah, mu naught sin i maximum is equal to mu 1 root of 1 minus mu 2 by mu 1. Here we put the value of the sin theta c in the previous equation. Now, we have mu naught sin i maximum is equal to root of mu 1 minus mu 2 square. And if we are taking the mu naught is equal to 1, if we considering the air, then sin i maximum is equal to root of mu 1 square minus mu 2 square. This equation gives the relation between the acceptance angle i max define the acceptance angle or the maximum angle through which the light pass into the fiber. This equation gives the relation between the acceptance angle and the refractive indices of the core and the cladding. The cone associated with the angle I maximum is called the acceptance cone. Then on the basis of that we define the numerical aperture. It is the measure of the light gathering capacity of the fiber and is defined as the product of the sign of the acceptance angle and the refractive index of the medium to which the end faces of the fiber are exposed is defined as the numerical aperture. We define the numerical aperture is equal to mu naught sin i maximum. Mu naught is equal to 1 for the air. Then we can get the numerical aperture is equal to sin i maximum and then we write it as root of mu 1 square minus mu 2 square and the refractive index del mu is equal to mu 1 minus mu 2 divided by the mu 1. Here we think a general communication system the how the light propagate into the optic optical fiber how the transmission takes place through the optical fiber this is the information sources from which the signal will pass through this is the transmitter which is known as the modulator also this is the transmission medium and another side we are having the receiver or we can say it is a demodulator this is the modulator and this is the demodulator our receiver will pass it to the destination this is the communication the in between that we define the communication system and the optical fiber communication system is like that the information sources it pass the electrical transmit, then optical source, optical fiber cable and through the optical detector again it converted into the electrical receiver and then it pass to the destination. This is the optical fiber communication system. Previously we defined the general communication system, but in the optical fiber the information converted into the electrical, then optical, then optical fiber cable pass this information. Then on the receiver side the optical detector will receive the signal, receive the signal in the form of the light, then it convert into the electrical form and then it pass to the destination. The next, the most important is the attenuation. The attenuation or the transmission loss. When the light pass through the optical fiber, there will be a loss in the transmission signal or loss in the power or loss in the light. Then it is known as the attenuation or the transmission loss in the uh, is the loss of optical power as a light travels down a fiber. The decrease in the signal strength along a fiber optic waveguides caused by the absorption and scattering is known as the attenuation. Attenuation is usually expressed in dB by km. Since attenuation is a loss, therefore it is al always expressed as P out is equal to P in 10 power minus alpha L by 10 or we can define alpha L is equal to 1 10 log 10 P in by P out which is the alpha is the attenuation coefficient of the fiber which define the loss in the fiber. Dispersion is one of the most important feature of the optical fiber. The dispersion expressed in terms of the symbol delta T which is defined as the pearl spreading in an optical fiber. Previously attenuation defined the loss but here the 
pulse will be spread in the optical fiber. As the pulse of the light propagates through the fiber, the elements such as numerical aperture, core diameter, refractive index profile, wavelength and the laser line width cause the pulse to broaden. Here we see that this is the amplitude, this is the time, this is the input signal we would define here. This is a dispersive channel which can broaden the signal. This poses a limitation on the overall bandwidth of the fiber. This is the input signal and this is put, this is the output signal and the signal is broadened through this dispersive channel. The another part is a V number. The V number defined the mode of multi mode in fiber. The number of modes of the multi mode fiber cables depends on the wavelength of the light, core diameter and the material composition. The number of modes of the we are talking about the multi mode uh, fiber cables. Uh, the number of modes in which depends upon the wavelength of light, core diameter and the material composition. This can be determined by the normalized function parameter V is equal to pi d divided by lambda mu 1 minus mu 2 mu 1 square minus mu 2 square which is equal to pi d divided by lambda and a because we know that uh, this mu 1 square minus mu 2 square root define the numerical aperture. Then d is the fiber core diameter and lambda is the wavelength of light and n is the numerical aperture. For a single mode fiber v must be less than equal to 2.4 but for a multi mode fiber it must be greater than 2.4. Mathematically the number mode v for a, fiber, uh, for a fiber is defined by the VST, this is a step index V square by 2 and for the graded index it is defined as the V square by 4. Thank you. With this note, thank you ma'am. Thank you so very much for giving us this session on optical fibers. Dear friends, there is a lot more for you. So, you are requested to keep watching uh, our lectures and uh, yes, of course, you can write emails to us if you have any queries or feedback at info.cc at nic.in. We are taking your leave with the promise that we are going to meet again soon. Till then, take care. Goodbye. Thank you ma'am. Thank, thank you so very much.